welcome to my sect of the universe. This is Jess from Capella Wellness, here to help you step into your truth and star into your power. For those of you who have never been here before, thank you so much for being here for the first time. For those of you who are returning, thank you for coming back to watch another one of my videos. And for my Capella members, thank you so much for your love, your loyalty, and your support. All right, Leo, we are going to look into what is going on with love. For you for the end of February 2023 or you can take it as what's going on with your person meaning how they're thinking feeling about you you take it how it resonates leave what doesn't for somebody else who's watching this and leave your unhealthy ego at the door make sure you're honest with yourself in your situation all right we're going to get more guidance as to how to best navigate these energies or to see what else we need to know about this connection about love for the end of February 2023 and we're also going to look into what this new supermoon in Pisces is bringing to your connection whether it's activating in yourself and your connection depends on how, you, uh, how it fits your story uh, it is at one degree of pisces it uh it is at 209 a.m eastern standard time um you may want to check where pisces is in your chart to see what's being illuminated what's being activated with this new super moon emotions are going to be running high okay and pisces is the most sensitive sign of zodiac so don't be surprised if you just up bawling out of nowhere or somebody comes to you expressing how they feel and you're having a crying session, whatever this is, release. Just let it go. Pisces is the end of the Zodiac. It's all about major releases, right? But new beginnings as well. Anyway, so we're going to see what's being activated with the new moon in Pisces and um, we're going to get the guidance from spirit, as I said, for your connection or with love. There is an extended for this reading, uh, Leo. You can find the link for that in the description box below. Uh, I will talk about what that reading entails at the end of the reading. All right, let's see what's going on here. This 10 stuff keeps coming out, guys. I talked about endings and new beginnings, but there's major endings happening, separations ending, unions happening, you resolving conflicts with people, you just ending these things that you know are not, not for you. This we had the ten of wands for Aries. Now you're getting the ten of swords. We, I keep getting this card, so I'm reading this as tarot because my guides have asked me to replay cards as tarot, and I listen to what my guides say. All right, this is ten of swords here. I love when you dance with me. This is, keeps coming up, guys. If you've watched my other readings, my weekly, if you're a member, stuff like that, it feels very strongly that a lot of these people who've been holding back, who have not been coming forward with the truth, who've been holding in their feelings, they are just so done. I think one of the fire signs got this too. Who was it? <clears throat> Scorpio, maybe? Okay. They're done. They can't deal with it anymore. It's like the pressure has, begun, has gotten so great. The overkill. It's just like, I'm just so done with this. I need to break this silence. I cannot hold my feelings in it anymore. I cannot pretend to be somebody else. I cannot pretend that I don't feel anything for my person. There are a lot of endings. This is the final chapter, guys. So for those of you who are single, who are watching this, it's the final chapter with regards to you um, <clears throat> being single. For some of you, but remember, you have to be in alignment with the love that you want to bring in, okay? Um, but there's a massive ending here. There's also a massive awakening happening with your person and your connection. <clears throat> you are also undergoing a massive awakening, a huge ascension process. A lot of us are actually elevating to a much higher frequency because of this new super moon in Pisces. All right. So make sure your energies are protected. Make sure you're balanced. Make sure you're grounded because if you have the tendency to be all scattered and to get super emotional very quickly, it could be very, very challenging for you. Okay. So there is a huge shift in the collective with regards to this energy. So, but there are a lot of major endings here and a lot of massive awakenings in the collective, not just within you, your person, but like other people, right? The collective, as I said. So, um, with regards to your love life here, it's like your person is saying to themselves, like, I just can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. They're done. They're spent emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. 
because they've been holding themselves back, because they've been pretending that they don't feel anything for you, because they have not been expressing their feelings honestly. Uh, it's like there's been this overkill with the need to, or this overkill with regards to not learning their lessons about speaking the truth, not learning their lessons of tapping into the feminine energy, not learning their lessons about being honest. Because the way that I see the Ten of Swords, one sword is a lesson. You repeat the same thing over and over again until God's like, I need you to get the lesson where you're just down on the ground and you're like, oh my God, what just happened? You hit rock bottom. The pain has become too great. The suffering has become too great. God's like, I need you to see the light in this darkness. I need you to see the light of truth. You need to be in your truth. You need to learn this lesson. So that you can free yourself. You can be liberated so that you can have this new beginning. This is what this person is going through right now. Um, it's like, I just can't do it anymore. I can't keep this in anymore. The pain is too great here. And they're like, I need to do something about this. I need to get up, pull the swords out, and keep moving forward. I can't stay down here in the water. I need to do something about this very heavy energy. It's like they're in misery here. They're, they're in misery because of the separation. They're in misery because you're not there. Because with the I love you when you dance with me, what it says in this card, there is an energy here where you guys love music because there are music notes here. Maybe you've danced together before. They're reminiscing about these fun times that they had with you. Um, and I'm also getting that some of you are divorced or your, per or your person's divorced. There's something here about finding freedom again in this person or finding love again, but it's also finding commonality or things that you have in common with regards to music or things that you love to do. Maybe you love to dance. Maybe you like to listen to music together, that type of thing. And this person is feeling revived. Wow. This person is feeling this revival because of you, because you're bringing back out that spark. You're bringing back up what it is that they love most about life. And a lot of you, there's something about music here um, or dancing. Take it either way. But there's something about bring you bringing this happiness to them after the divorce, after feeling like they've hit rock bottom, after feeling like a failure. Ten of Swords is failure. Feeling like they're, they're good for nothings type of thing. Like life isn't going to get any better. I'm just going to be dealing in this really shitty hole, whatever, and that's it. That's the end of life for me. That's not what it is. You've shown them that that's not what life is. It's not what love is either. So... Um, this person, uh, it's like they're also this love for you is so immense here, Leo. It's it's painful for them. It's so deep, it hurts. It's so good that it hurts. It like they feel this thing inside their chest when they think about you, when they look at you. It's like, oh my God, it's like Cupid's arrows, but Cupid's arrows like this have very pointy tip. <laughs> Okay, so um, this person is really, really, really in love with you. But it's like the love is so great here. There's pain that comes with it. But that pain is also tying to them being separated from you, from not, from not being near you. The bottom of the deck is the two of diamonds, which is the two of pentacles. Love is blind. Okay. There's something about having blind faith right? Not seeing with their human eyes. It's uh, looking at things from their third eye. Understanding what the truth is in this connection. That um, even though they've been betrayed before, they've been backstabbed before, they've gone through a really miserable, horrible divorce that kind of stripped them of everything is what I'm hearing, that they can find love again. And that two of pentacles is like, I don't think that's possible. I mean, I've hit rock bottom. This is where I'm going to be. There's nothing good that comes of this. That is a total lie. And this person has been like juggling between two options. Should I get back up or should I stay down? Should I move forward with this connection? Or should I still stay in this mentality thinking that it's still going to be doom and gloom, that it's going to end up in divorce, that it's going to be another bad, horrible, destructive relationship where I'm going to be 
battered again, where I'm going to be bruised again, where I'm going to be burned again, where I'm going to be betrayed again, where I'm going to be belittled again, where I'm going to be backstabbed again. This person has been like this, this loop because the infinity symbol is in the two of pentacles. This person has been in a never ending loop here about, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead with this love. I'm going to, I'm going to go date again. I'm going to go with my person. I'm going to choose my person. Oh no, go back around. No, I got to cycle back because I don't think it's going to turn out the way I think. No, I can do this. No, I can't. No, I can do this. No, I can't. This or that. Which one is it? This person has been oscillating between options because the the fear of being in pain again, the fear of divorce again, the fear of, you know, being betrayed again. You cannot allow yourself to get into that fear because you're blocking yourself from true love when you do that. This Ten of Swords for some of you had to happen to get you to learn some serious lessons. Ten Swords are about lessons. <clears throat> okay. This is not to say you were deserving of it or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. They were lessons you had to learn. Some of you, this is dealing with your karma. Okay. You may have backstabbed somebody else or betrayed somebody else in another lifetime. And now karma is coming you to kick you in the ass. That's what it is for some of you. Okay. So this person has been going back and forth with communicating with you, with making an offer, with, with going through with this love, with believing what this love is, right? Love is blind. Again, there's no color. There's no race. There's no gender. There's no political party. There's no nothing. It's just love. Love doesn't judge. Love doesn't criticize. Love is patient. Love is kind. First Corinthians over there. And when I look at this with these two people with the sunglasses on, they can't really fully see the person in all the color, right? Because usually when you go through, look through sunglasses, it's not the actual technicolor, if you will. Um, there's a little bit of distortion. Now, if you're wearing rose colored, colored glasses, that's a different story. But what I'm getting with this is they are, um, they're going by their feeling, not by their eyesight not by the looks there apparently some of you your person had an issue with judging a book by its cover but they felt something about you that ended up alleviating the pain that they had especially from a past relationship that was just really it went wrong in all senses of the word it was just not pleasant whatsoever it was a very bitter very very miserable divorce and uh, they may have judged you because you may have looked similar or acted similar to their past person, their ex or whatever. But they started to realize, well, wait, the feeling is different. I feel genuine love for this person. I feel happiness. It's like um, you make my heart sing with these, these notes here. Okay, heart songs or something like that. You make my heart sing. Nobody's been able to, make, to have my heart sing like that. And this person is starting to realize, why am I going back and forth with pursuing a life with this person? Why am I going back and forth with regards to, you know, uh, starting something with this individual, with my person? Again, oscillating between options. There's also a tendency to not really be decisive because of fear of change, resistant to change, being afraid of like, well, I'm juggling all these other things. Like when I, this person comes into my life, now what am I going to do? things are going to have to give, right? Things are going to have to be given up, especially when you are committing to someone. Like, seriously, you can't be doing all this stuff and putting your person on the back burner. Love is not supposed to go on the back burner. Love is supposed to be on the front burner. You're supposed to be cooking it every day. You're supposed to be looking at it every day, feeling at it every day. Your person is supposed to be at the forefront of that. Of your everyday life not it's not an option the person got presented to you is not an option and for some of you your person treated you as an option oh well I want to have that sandwich today but I'm gonna go with this one I want to drive that car today but no I'm gonna go with this one or options right these are not cars Leo, these are not sandwiches. These are people. And when somebody brings you this love, somebody brings you that euphoria, again, with that connection to music, or they, they make your heart sing. 
why would you be putting your happiness on the back burner? Why would you be putting those feelings on the back burner? Why would you be putting that person who makes you feel better, who makes you happy on the back burner? This is what's been going on. <clears throat> but it looks like this person is done with this. I'm tired of being incapable of making a decision and making a choice. I'm tired of putting this person on the back burner. I'm tired of when I say I'm going to do something, then I revoke my offer and then I go choose somebody else or I do something else, right? There is somebody here who's juggling too many things and they end up dropping the ball because they're overcommitting. And then what's happening when they're overcommitting, the person who means most of them in, in life, the person that they should be prioritizing in life gets shunned gets put aside, they get put on the shelf that you can't reach. And they've realized they've been doing this a lot because they've got too much going on. They've got too many responsibilities. They're prioritizing the wrong things in life. When you don't prioritize yourself, your well-being, your happiness first, you're doing yourself a disservice. When you don't prioritize the people who mean the most to you first, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's when karma hits you. Because you're not prioritizing what is really of value. Pentacles talk about value. But this person's done putting you on the back burner. This person's just done with not choosing you first they're just so done they're done with the wishy-washiness they're done with like okay i'm gonna say something to them i'm gonna make them an offer i'm gonna go put them first i'm gonna go see them i'm gonna go talk to them and they go back on it oh no if i do this it's gonna change everything if I tell them how I feel, it's going to change my life. If I express to them the truth, there's no going back. Aries got a similar message. But it's been killing them. Killing them softly. Being in the state where they can't prioritize correctly, they're juggling too much, or they, they can't make that the choice, the choice that is right for them, it's it's been killing them. It has been really causing a lot of destruction in their life. And they're really reminiscing about the fun times that you had. And they're also killing themselves for not choosing that, not choosing their happiness first, not choosing you. Top of the deck is three of spades, it's three of swords. I love when you kiss me. You have a very unique way of kissing, perhaps, is what I just heard. Three of swords, there's a separation right there. Their life, they've been in misery because of the separation, because they know they actually caused it over and over again. Again, they've been doing this. It's been a pattern. It's been a loop. They come in. You have a great time. They talk to you. Hey, let's go out. Let's go do this. And like, I love being with this person. And then the real shit happens. And then the emotions kick in. It's so good that it hurts, right? It's, they love you so much. It's like painful. Wait, what is this? And then the fear kicks in. I don't want to be betrayed again. I don't want to be hurt again. I don't want to be burned. Nope. Go back. The other side of the record, whatever. It's like going back to the other side of the loop, the infinity symbol. Uh, nope, nope. I'm not doing that. Then they come back in again. Oh, hey, how's it going? Let's go out. Same thing. Having a great time. Then eh, put on the brakes. And, uh, no. This person's going to betray me. This paralyzing fear of this repeating itself. This person had to get that out of their head. And then they retract again. Nope, I'm not doing it. No, no, bye. Or they don't talk to you ever again. Loop again. Repeat the song. Somebody keeps repeating songs or something that were reminiscent of your connection. 
Come back in again. You see where this is going? It's a never-ending loop. They keep doing the same thing over and over and over again with the wishy-washiness of like saying they're going to do something and retracting it. They do something and then they repeat the same behavior. This is what that ten of swords is, repeating the same karmic patterns, not learning from the lesson. What are you doing? <laughs> okay? And this person's like, I've had enough. I'm hearing that somebody's actually yelling into the sky or something. I've had enough of this shit. I gotta stop doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I gotta put an end to this. They're putting an end to this separation here. Because they're done doing the same damn thing. I'm hearing I'm ending the separation. Because it, I can't. I have to stop. I have to break the silence. I have to stop repeating the same behavior. I got to stop putting love on the back burner, my happiness on the back burner. I got to stop putting this person who makes me feel euphoric, who makes my heart sing. I got to stop putting that person in the back burner. What am I doing to my life? I'm feeling miserable without this person. Like, why am I causing this to my doing this to myself? What else do you want us to know about this person, about this love for the end of February, Holy Spirit? Wow, that is a lot right there. Look, self-worth issues. I talked a lot about this in Aries' reading. This is kind of like a common ally between the fire signs so far. Compromise and karmic partner. What did I say about somebody who betrayed them, who backstabbed them? Somebody who was in a divorce, who got divorced. by It was a very nasty divorce. Someone really fucked somebody up. But they allowed it. That's the cold, hard truth. And that does not mean that I'm not having sympathy for the person who had this happen to them. It does suck when that happens. I know I've been through it multiple times. One divorce, not the, the betrayal multiple times, that is. You don't see me bitter. You don't see me feeling like a victim. At some point, I was feeling like a victim, but I didn't heal, so I was continuing to attract people who were going to betray me over and over and over again. Because I wasn't committing to myself. I wasn't loving myself first. I had so low self-worth, guys. It wasn't even funny. And some of you think like, what? That's not possible. Go ask people who know me for a while. This was a huge issue for me. Which led to this. I had to hold myself accountable. My energy was so low, I was attracting low energy people. Who didn't know their worth either. But anyway, this is not about me, even though I'm Leo suddenly arising, but still. Self-worth was a huge issue with your person. Not feeling deserving of your love, not feeling worthy. Again, this divorce, this ex, this betrayal here really screwed him up. And it was a karmic partner who did it. But they're realizing that they had to let go of this karmic. They had to let go of the ex. They had to let go of what happened in that connection and not think that it was going to happen in the future. There was a huge lack of faith with this person. They did not have faith that it wasn't going to repeat. But here's the thing, guys. When you stay in this energy or you're still staying stuck with this karmic energy, what happened with this person, you're going to manifest that into your reality. Like attracts like. You're at a lower vibrational energy. You continue to be a victim instead of a victor. You're going to continue to give your power away. You're going to continue to have people who are going to do that to you. But they're really understanding, I need to really believe in myself. I really need to say I am deserving of love. Just because this karmic screwed me over or betrayed me or backstabbed me or whatever doesn't mean I'm not lovable. It doesn't mean I'm a piece of shit. It doesn't mean I'm a failure because Ten of Swords is also feeling like a failure. This person's like, I'm done thinking like this. This is repetitive. This is cyclic. This is dumb. Why do I continue to put myself in this misery when I'm the one who could get myself up, pull the swords out, and move towards some other energy? to ascend, to elevate my vibration. There's also an energy here about this person may have had a hard time compromising with other people, maybe a hard time com compromising with their karmic or something, 
Because remember, it takes two to tango. When we're in a divorce, it doesn't mean it's just like one person's fault and that's it. It's not. I know with my divorce, I had to be accountable for my shit. I already told you one of the reasons why. That's honesty right there. That's vulnerability right there. When I really did analysis on myself and said, oh my God, like I was part of this. We were both at fault. So there was an issue about compromising with people or like they didn't feel like they were good enough or like somebody had to like give everything to them or follow it their way. There could also be issues with compromising with the karmic, something about through the divorce here that's happened. Um, the two of pentacles, like realizing that change is inevitable. I need to learn how to compromise. Again, I got to stop putting the things that are meaningful to me on the back burner. Somebody could very well have been putting money and jobs, their career on the front burner as opposed to love, as opposed to the person. That could be for somebody. So um, this person's having to realize that, you know, if I want love to work, I have to be able to compromise. I all, but I can't be self-sacrificing, right? You speak your piece. You say what it is that you want, what you need. You listen to the other person and say, okay, what can we both agree on? What do we both not agree on? Uh, and how are we going to compromise? What it is, it's like that Venn diagram. <laughs> Don't agree on this. Uh, agree on this. And then we come in the middle. Right? I'm seeing the Venn diagram. What is in the middle of the Venn diagram? That's the compromise part of it. Okay. Maybe this is this is the middle of the Venn diagram. This is one other circle and this is the other circle. I don't know why I'm getting that, but that's what they're telling me. <clears throat> this could also be your person trying to make amends with the karmic. To compromise instead of being very standoffish or being like, no, I'm doing it this way. You betrayed me so much, I'm not going to compromise with you whatsoever. I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to actually work with you on things. There's like a three of pentacles issue, a teamwork issue here. But this karmic partner has really been affecting their decision making for sure. That's why they've been going back and forth with you, with things that are important to them. But they're starting to realize, like, with this person's outstretched arms, this, this is like a victory here. <clears throat> I am worthy of this love. I am not going to base this really difficult relationship with this karmic partner to dictate my future, to determine, <coughs> excuse me, what I am deserving of or not deserving of. The conclusion is at the bottom of the deck. What did I say? Conclusion. It's the final chapter. It's the end. They found the key to unlock what it is that they kept repeating. Why they were in this infinite loop. Why they were wishy-washy. Why they weren't able to find true love. Why their life was still a picture of misery. Why separation kept happening between you and them. And that key was realizing I can get up and unlock the door and walk out of this self-worth shit. The key was understanding that their low self-esteem, their lack of self-worth, the lack of self-confidence, the victimization, the pity parties, all that bullshit was causing them to attract karmics, causing them to attract the, again, the karmic patterns, the karma. We talked about getting the karma. And they said, oh shit, it's me. I need to shift. It could even be you, Leo. Take it how it resonates. Top of the deck is recognition. They're recognizing who you are. They're recognizing what they've done. 
that is huge right there. And look at how the conclusion is the soulmate card. See, they're recognizing you as their person. I got to stop putting my soulmate, my counterpart on the back burner. They make me feel this love. They make me feel wonderful. They, they add to the happiness that I really need in my life. We're going to hide this karmic card. Guys, I have to say this. If you are watching readings or you're, you're focusing too much on the karmic partner, you know what you're doing? You're actually lowering your vibration by picking up that energy. I don't know why I'm saying that, but they wanted me to say it. When we can't be saying, oh yeah, well the karmic is going to get their karma, well, karmic this, karmic that, they ruined our connection, uh-uh-uh, no, no, and no, and no. Do not go there. That is not what a true divine feminine does. And they're not caught up on what the karmic is doing. They can better understand the karmic energy, the karmic partner, because the karmic partner was teaching your person lessons. You also had a karmic partner, partner that you kept running to when your person wasn't working out. You kept running into the same shit. That's the truth. What is being activated in this connection between Leo and their person? Or what's being activated in love for the uh, with this new moon? Super moon in Pisces. Holy Spirit, Archangels, Galactic Families, playing Sirens, please and thank you. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your support, and your clarity. Wow, Leo, shit. What the hell is this? Okay, we have honesty. Someone's going to come forward and be like, I need to be fucking honest here. I'm done with this cyclic pattern. I'm done, just so done. I need to speak my truth. I need to be honest with Leo. That's it. The energy of honesty supports our choice to be courageously truthful and genuine with kindness intact. This person's going to be all up in the feels, super, super emotional. And the missing you is going to get so great that they're just, I can't take it. Emotions running high. I have to be honest with Leo once and for all. I can't keep oscillating between doing this. Seventh chakra. The energy of the crown chakra supports our feeling of being connected to a higher power and part of a larger whole. Pisces energy is about the seventh chakra. It is the crown chakra. It is the higher realms. It is connecting to source, to God, the angelic realm, the 5D frequency, okay? this That's what Pisces is. It's out there. It's boundless. It's the universe. So this person, this new moon here, was being activated in your connection or in your, your love situation here. You are going to, again, emotions running high, but more so of tapping more into being in alignment with your higher self, connecting more with God, connecting more with the 5D. Maybe beyond the 5D, depends. Maybe there's 7D that some of you connect to because there's a seven there. <coughs> it all depends. This new moon is really going to help you guys to be more in alignment, oneness with God, with the universe. Understanding that we're all one to include your one with your person, right? It's going to really open up the crown chakra here, guys. And you guys are going to see things through the eyes of God. See people through who they are and the divine people that they are. Seeing, the way, seeing people the way God sees them. That's what's really activating with this whole love piece, with this whole new super moon in Pisces. It's really going to shift the frequencies, guys, because super moons really activate these senses. It really activates those emotional feelings. It heightens your intuition to an incredible degree. And with it being in Pisces, that's just expanding it tenfold. Okay? It is massive here. We're all going to go through this massive energy shift and this massive ascension. Some of you are going to be getting these downloads. You're going to be like, where the fuck did this come from? You better be prepared for this. You're going to get these brilliant ideas, like these imaginative, innovative ideas. When they come in, you better have a pen and paper or your phone ready to drop them down. But that's only if you're going to be grounded enough, in alignment enough to receive that information. Okay, to also to help you to better understand your love life or, you know, what true love is. 
there's the soul card. The energy of soul activates our connection to the part of us that is closer to the higher realms, God or the divine. I just said this. Soul growth, soul expansion. We're all elevating to a higher realm here. Connecting more with God, with the higher realms. I said it. I don't even need to, to continue on with it. Expression. The frequency of expression supports our ability to bring out our true essence through many different forms of communication. See, somebody's going to get very imaginative, really connecting with God to express how they feel and being very honest about it. Different forms of communication, guys. This does not mean the person has to tell you how they feel about you through words. There's something creative, something imaginative here. That's what Pisces is. Pisces is very musical. They're very uh, creative. They're very in tune with that feminine energy because water, Pisces, is feminine energy. Romantic love. The frequency of romantic love supports our experience to know ourselves through the reflection of a conscious lover. That is our relationships reflect our inner wounds. That there's a higher love other than romantic love, but this is also activating more of the romance between you two, but this is understanding the agape love because that's the soul in the seven chakra stuff. The higher love here, being in that truth of what agape love is, what the higher love is, that this is what we need. We don't just want romantic love. We need agape love. And that's not just with romantic partners. It's with everyone in the collective, okay? Knowing ourselves through the reflection of a conscious lover. Your person has been teaching you valuable lessons. The karmic taught you valuable lessons. The karmic taught your person valuable lessons. That it's not just about the romance. It's about the unconditional love. This is not about eros, which is romance. It's about agape, which is unconditional. So it looks like this new moon in Pisces is really pushing this person to express how they feel. To activate now that you have some of you have reached the higher frequency of agape love. Now you're going to be blessed with incorporating the romantic love into this connection. You've got to get to the agape love first in order to have that true love there and have the romance come with it. The other part of this, 36, may be significant. I'm seeing 36. Somebody's birthday is March 6th. Um, sensuality. The frequency of sensuality reminds us that as spirits and human bodies, we are sensual beings experiencing joy and pleasure from the physical world through our senses. This is tapping into that feminine energy. Sensuality. Right? Being sensual, being sexual, not being afraid of that, not tapping into those energies where you feel this love for yourself, but this is also tapping into that sensual side. Also tapping into like when you're eating food and you're savoring it, you're enjoying it. That is part of sensuality. Or even like, you know, what you wear when you go to bed or the type of sheets that you sleep on. Or um, your strong Taurus moon energy with this is what I'm getting. Uh, you being able to... Tap into that feminine side and just really enjoying the pleasures, Venus energy uh, of life and, and allowing you to, to have, enjoy yourself with that. Um, to be in tune with our physical bodies and in tune with the physical body of another. It's, it's the merging of these two souls. And as I'm saying that the duality cards here, union, the yin yang stuff, balancing masculine feminine energy, the frequency of duality supports our ability to gracefully flow with the everlasting movement among opposites. Opposites attract, right? We all learn from the opposites. We all learn from the people who are not like ourselves. We are all dualistic in nature. We have massive feminine energies and it's about merging the two but not completely fusing them together where they get it's it's distorted it's it's convoluted it's confusing because pisces energy can bring illusion and confusion understanding that we're multi multi-dimensional beings but we have the masculine and the feminine energy but this is about them working in tandem not something where they're merging if you look at this yin and yang the colors are not merging to create another color they're one but they still have their individualism to it Commitment. Wow. There is a union here. With the two becoming one, it's leading to commitment. 
13, death card, the frequency of Scorpio energy coming in here. The frequency of commitment supports our ability to devote ourselves in all aspects of our being and with unwavering belief. When you commit to yourself and your happiness, you're able to draw in somebody who will commit to you, your equal. The person vibrating at your level. This is also remembering in a relationship, you commit to yourself first and foremost, your happiness, your well-being, your health. You commit to the other person and then you commit to the relationship. There are three things. There's a trinity there. And the relationship deals with God being first and foremost in that relationship. But this is also activating commitment between the masculine and the feminine. It's also a lot for you committing to yourselves first to attract that true love, to attract the love that you need, not that you want. There is a lot of stuff activating for you with this new moon, Leo. Check your fifth house is what I just heard. All right, so before I go to the extended guys, I'm going to pull a guidance card for all of you. The extended is going to entail what your person is struggling with, what's blocking them. It helps to understand what your person is dealing with to have some sort of compassion and understanding and empathy towards that. Because we're all dealing with battles and struggles, guys. This is not an easy life to live. We're in earth school. So when you understand where your person's coming from and what they've been battling, it helps you to better understand them as a person. That is what a true divine feminine does. We're also going to go look into what's happening next in your connection, what's happening next in your love life. And lastly, we're going to get messages from your person to see what they wanted to say to you during Valentine's Day that they just couldn't say. What guidance do we have for Leo with this connection with regards to love for the end of February? 2023 guys you got a lot of cards coming out serendipity being at the right place at the right time sexual freedom i talked about the sensuality and the sexuality too right there's a union here between two people but this is about vulnerability being your true authentic selves this talks about the duality here right soulmates oh my god look at this there is union energy all over this place. Soulmates connect. They reunite. Self-respect. you got to respect yourself first here, Leo. If you want somebody to respect you. And there's also having a respect for other people. Even though we may be different, even though we may look at things differently, we still respect other people's visions, other people's opinions. We're not throwing ourselves out there saying, well, you're wrong, I'm right. We're being open. We're being honest. Okay, let me understand more of what you're saying. <coughs> right? We don't have to agree with the person, guys. We don't have to like the person. But if we respect them for who they are, that means you're coming from a divine place. You see them through the eyes of God. Okay? But the self-respect starts with you. And if you're not respecting yourself first, other people are not going to respect you or your boundaries or your beliefs or where you're coming from. Respect your wishes or something about sexuality here, your sexual preferences. Something's about to happen here. And again, this is about being at the right place at the right time. But see, you're in this boat here. You're continuing to traverse through that lake here to your paradise, to your happiness. But it's a journey. You got to keep the life vest on. That's God is what I'm hearing. Um, your angels, the angelic realm, the higher realms are leading you to paradise. All these serendipitous things, these signs and synchronicities are happening to lead you on the right path, to help you to stay in alignment with God, to, to be following uh, God's truth is what I'm hearing. To lead you to sexual freedom, to lead you to union, to sexual union right here. And again, this is not like some of you may be in these sets relationships or maybe you, this is in the past 
where you felt like if you you had sex with somebody they were gonna they were gonna keep you around or or they were gonna love you more or oh it's my soulmate so let me just go have like sex with them and then they'll stay around forever no you got to get to know the person first all right um but there's also with that lotus new beginnings it's expansion it's evolution of the soul it's enlightenment it's it's uh 5d stuff crown chakra stuff the opening of the mind right how that lotus opens up when it comes from the muddy waters transformation you going through those difficulties that the, the earth school and then you become more enlightened as you move along through life understanding that you should be able to be free sexually with regards to your sexual preferences right like not getting caught up in these stigma stigmas and taboos like when they talk about like bondage or bdsm or something like that or different positions i've heard some things from somewhere somebody said that missionary was the only position that you could engage in sex in and no other position i was like who the hell said that i can't remember what it was but I remember talking to somebody, and it had to do something with religion. That missionary was the only allowable position from God to have sex in. Ah, what the hell is that shit? But anyway, we move on, right? But there is, with this guidance here, right? We're not, we're here to express ourselves, and we shouldn't be shy of you know, our sexual preferences, how we want a sexual relationship to be, a sexual union to be. This is letting go of those stigmas, those taboos. This is allowing yourself to be one with a person, but not doing something for somebody else because, okay, here's the case in point. Somebody likes to have sex done one way, but you don't like having it that way. This is why the compromise card is here. But the person's like, well, no, you need to do it like the way I want. No. That's not a union there. That's control. That's, that's, uh, that's distortion right there. So there's something about you comp compromising on what it is that you agree to. Again, that Venn diagram on how you, know, you want to engage in sexual activity or what sex means to you. All right. The sexual freedom is being more in a higher realm, understanding that it's tantric in nature, that there needs to be a soul connection. It's not just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and you're done. This, it's a soul connection. You're coming together as the soul mates. You're connecting through the soul, through the higher realms, right? To free yourselves, to engage in this, this beautiful connection between two people. It's not a sin. It's in, in the way, however you want to do it, it's the way you want to do it. If you connect in that way, it's fine. But both have to be in agreement with that. That there's more to relationships than just having great sex. It's a soul connection. It is depth. It is divinity. It is enlightenment. Where you're soaring above the clouds. You're having sex and you're moving to a completely different uh, dimension here. It's out of this world. It blows your mind. It, it puts you in this incredible state of bliss and euphoria your vibration goes through the roof but there's eye contact involved in this there's soul involved in this it's not just getting off being done with it turning over and going to sleep okay that's what i'm getting with this but anyway um sex is transformative with these butterflies here but when you understand what sex really is. There's also something about a sexual journey here. But there's something lucky that's about to happen that's gonna bring about this union, this, this connection of, of counterparts. And that we all have soulmates, guys. Not all soulmates are romantic in nature. Keep that in mind. And there's something here about somebody saying, oh, well, there was a serendipitous moment and we just bumped into each other. And, oh, you're my soulmate. Let's go, let's go do it in the bushes. I don't know why I said that. In the car. Right? 
Not all soulmates are there for forever, guys. So be careful if you're like, oh, this is my soulmate. Let me go like have sex with him. Watch that. Somebody needs to hear that, right? <laughs> I will say this. If you haven't heard me say this before, my son is my soulmate. There is no conne romantic connection between me and my son. It's more of the higher realms. There's a strong soul bond between me and my son, right? I've had other people that I was in relationships with who were soulmates. They're not around anymore. Except, well, my husband's still around, but that's because he's my ex-husband. Not my husband, he's my ex-husband. He's the father of my child. I have people in my capella circle who are my soulmates. Some of them are guys, okay? Keep that in mind. All right, guys. Uh, I hope this helped you. So I'm moving on to the extended right now. So actually, no, I lied. I'm going to have dinner because dinner is ready. <laughs> I'm going to have dinner with the family and then I'm going to come back to the extended. But either way, it doesn't matter because you, I will already have eaten the dinner, everything before you guys watch this. Um, yeah. So if you're interested in joining with me in the extended, you can go to capellawellness.com. Click on the extended video section of my website uh, at the header. Or you can click on the link in the description box below to take you to the extended videos page so that you can go through whatever extended you want. Remember, look for Leo, end of February 2023. If you have any questions about anything, any issues with the accessing extended reading, please let me know. Again, we're going to go through what your person's struggling with, what they've been battling, what's happening next in your connection, and what messages they wanted to give you on Valentine's Day that they just couldn't, okay? And whatever else comes through. All right, guys, if this is where I leave you, thank you, Leo, for watching this video, for subscribing to this channel if you haven't already, and for illuminating that thumbs up button. I would greatly appreciate it. I wish you the best today. Always, I send you so, so much love, and I hope I illuminated your well being today. Again, this is Jess from Capella Wellness, starring out.